again i have from o i've taken one two and three and marked it as three and that is on oa and again o o ob i've taken one two and three and this is the line that uh, this is the point that i have obtained as three three that now this is the point through which my uh, hyperbola has to pass now what i'll do is i'll draw parallel lines to oa and ob from this point say from the base i'll draw a, a vertical parallel line passing through three three from uh, from the segment that is a vertical segment i'll draw a parallel line to the horizontal segment and again passing through point three three as you can see here ef is the line that is parallel to o ob and cd is the line that is parallel to oa so i have these lines which are parallel to the axis and passing through the point p which is a point on hyperbola and the point which is given to me in the question next step three uh, i i'll mark seven points on cd that is my horizontal line that is there passing through point three three that is given in the question i have taken one point on left hand side of the point that i have to uh, through which my parabola is going to pass and the rest of the points i've taken on the right hand side as as you will be able to see i've taken this point uh point one on this hand side because my hyperbola would be going somewhere here and then passing some uh, uh, passing through here that's what a rectangular hyperbola looks like so i've taken this point one here and the rest of the points i have plotted in this fashion now what next why did i do this i'll make it clear once again because i need i require a point here also in this uh, particular area through which the hyperbola is going to pass and here i will have two three four five six and seven points P uh, P two P three P four P five P six P seven points through which the my hyperbola is going to pass. So this uh, cursor will trace the path of a hyperbola, which will we will be obtaining at the end of this method. Next step four, I'm going to draw lines from the origin, that is from the point of intersection of the O A and O B. From O I'll connect O one, uh, O two, O three, O four up till O seven, and the points where they are intersecting the uh, vertical line that is a straight line passing through the point given point that is 3 3 would be marked on ef would be marked as 1 dash 2 dash 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash 6 dash and 7 dash so it goes somewhere something like this from o i pass a line through point 1 and intersected this axis ef here now the next is uh, this line o2 o3 o4 O five, O six, O seven. Uh, I have all the lines. Now I'll mark the points. So this is the first point that I've got one dash. This is the second point two dash. This is the third point three dash, four dash, five dash, six dash, seven dash, and eight dash. Oh sorry, eight dash is not there. I'm sorry. So it is up till seven dash that we have these points. Now my next step is that I'm going to draw vertical lines. Through one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, vertical lines would be of where here from one. I'm going to draw it upwards because my this point is upwards. From here, I'm going to draw downwards because all these points are downwards. Similarly, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. My all the points would come downwards, and then I'm going to draw horizontal lines through one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oh, sorry, one, one dash, two dash, three dash, four dash, five, six, and six dash, and seven dash. Like it goes like this. So, we'll see. Vertical lines from one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Horizontal lines uh, through points one dash, two dash, three dash, four dash, five dash, six dash, and seven dash. And the we'll be marking the intersection points as P one, P two, P three, P four, P six, uh, P seven. That is final. So the vertical line from one and horizontal line from one dash, the intersection point would be P one. Let's see. First, we'll draw the vertical lines uh, through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next thing that we are going to do is we are going to draw horizontal line and mark the intersection points p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 and p7 i hope you all understood this point horizontal the lines the lines if you all see if the points are on this axis then the uh, lines should be uh, parallel to this axis and if the points are on this axis then it has to be parallel to this axis this is a better way of remembering how the lines have to be plotted and inevitably we uh, we want ki these two points we have lines that intersect at a point so that we can pass the curve through this so now i have points 
uh, on both the sides of the axis now what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a smooth curve that is passing through p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 and p7 and finally i'll have what i'll have my rectangular hyperbola through this particular method let's see so this is the point uh, so point one uh, p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 and p7 i have this curve in uh, purple that is passing through all those points uh, that gives me my rectangular hyperbola now I, I like to mention again and I'm mentioning this again and again so that yeah, it's more clear to you that this uh, PowerPoint presentation has its own limitations for drawing and this curve might not be as smooth as it is, it is required but in your sketchbook or in your sheet it should be as smooth as possible if your curve is not smooth then you have, you have not plotted the points properly or there are some mistakes that you have done so kindly do the problem again so that you have a better result so that in examination you don't make any mistakes okay so the next method that we are going to discuss is the oblique method now again as the difference was between rectangular uh, for parabola rectangle method and and parallelogram method the same this um, uh, difference is here that instead of the axis being at 90 degrees so this is uh, these axes are at 90 degrees now instead of taking 90 degrees if i take it as 80 degrees or say 75 degrees then my uh, all these lines that all these lines would become parallel to this line so my the whole shape of my parabola uh, hyperbola will inevitably change but it will be very similar to the rectangular hyperbola so let's see how an oblique hyperbola is constructed so the first thing here again we will have a point i have again taken the point three three so that if you see both the methods one by one so you will be you will understand what is the basic difference between rectangular hyperbola and oblique hyperbola so uh, at the second point also mentioned the difference uh, is that the coordinate axis is at less than 90 degrees here i have taken it as 80 degrees so step one is draw the coordinate axis and the angle between oa and a a ob instead of being 90 degrees I have taken it as 80 degrees and I will plot the same point P33 in that axis. Say this is line OA and this is line OB. Now as you can see this is at an angle 80 degrees and the same thing is being repeated that the points are being plotted on OA and on OB as you can see. And again see uh, what has changed here one thing has changed that uh, the 90 degrees instead of 90 degrees it, it is 80 degrees now the second thing that has changed is that this point would have been exactly on top of uh, point 3 on uh, OA but it has moved towards right hand side why because this axis instead of being exactly perpendicular to OA it has uh, deviated to 10 degrees this on the right hand side or say clockwise so my distance uh, has to be my this line which used to be perpendicular will also be at 80 degrees and this point will be on that particular line which will be clear in the next step now again same thing i'll draw is i'll draw horizontal and vertical lines which are parallel to oa and ob and also passing through point p which i did last time also but last time what was the point that all these both lines were perpendicular to each other in this case it will not be perpendicular to each other it will be at 80 degrees as you can see ef and C, uh, cd now cd is has remained horizontal so it it has not changed a bit but only thing has changed that, that it has moved on the right hand side now there is a major difference in ef that this angle used to be 90 degrees this angle used to be 90 degrees instead that this angle is 80 degrees and again this angle is also 80 degrees so this is the major difference between rectangular hyperbola and oblique hyperbola that is there in drawing an hyperbola by two different methods and the result also is different so now again the methods or the steps that i'll do is uh, same I'll divide, I'll put plot points to 1 to 7 on CD. One I'll plot it on left hand side of uh, EF and the rest of the points I'll plot on right hand side of EF as you can see which was also the um, thing that was done in rectangular hyperbola in just the previous method that we discussed. Okay, the next step that what we did, can you all recall what, uh, what we did next? The next thing that we did is join OA and extend it up to the uh, axis ef and then mark the intersection point on ef as one dash for then i'll do it for point two and mark the intersection point on ef as two dash then three dash then four dash then five dash six dash and finally seven dash 
first I'll draw the lines O1 to O2, O3, O4, O5, O6 and O7. Next thing that I'll do is I'll mark the points of intersection as 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash, 4 dash, 5 dash, 6 dash and 7 dash. Finally, so this steps, these steps remain almost equal to what uh, was there in rectangular hyperbola. The next thing, again, the steps would be same. I'll draw vertical parallel lines to EF from 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, here also the difference is that those vertical lines were parallel to, uh, sorry, perpendicular to CD. But here, they will not be perpendicular to CD. But th just the point we have to keep in mind is that it has to be parallel to EF. Now, uh, the second thing is the horizontal lines from uh, CD from points that is 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash will be parallel to CD and that will remain same as previously and then mark the intersection point as 1, 2, 3, 4, P1, P2, P3, P4 up till P7. Let's see, I have marked, uh, I've, I'm drawing parallel lines to EF that is my vertical lines from when I've drawn it upwards. You know the reason why we discussed because this point is above, the, uh, above CD so I need to mark the intersection point so I need to draw the vertical line this way. So from 2 it comes down 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 all vertically downwards. Now what I'll do is I'll draw horizontal lines from 1 dash, 2 dash up till 7 dash and mark the intersection point as P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8. Oh, sorry p7 is the last one i keep mentioning p8 the more the points you take the more accurate will be your hyperbola that is what i keep on mentioning so take more and more points possible i have taken seven points you might take 10 points or you might take 12 points the more accurate you want the figure to be take more points the more points you take the more accurate will be your final figure now I'll do the same thing again. I'll pass a smooth curve passing through P1, P2, P3, P4 up till P7 to get my required hyperbola. Okay, so let's move on to the final method that is hyperbola by directrix method. Thereafter we'll come to the end of conex. Uh, so let's start the hyperbola by directrix and focus method. For this, again, uh, see the eccentricity here comes the change eccentricity is 3 by 2 I have taken focus as 50 mm why as I mentioned in ellipse also now this is 3 and this is 2 so this is fi uh, 5 so I am taking it as 50 mm so that I can make you understand if I would have taken any other figure then it would have become a little more complex for you to understand so eccentricity is 3 by 2 and that's why I'm taking the focus as 50 mm these both things will be mentioned in your question if uh, somebody wants you to draw or uh, in the question if it, it wants you to draw uh, hyperbola by directrix and focus method so what I'm going to do is again I first I'll draw the directrix and I'll draw my axis CC dash my directrix AB and my axis CC dash okay the next thing that I'll do is I'll mark my F which is 50 mm from C that is on the axis this is 50 mm okay the next thing that I'll do is now in parabola I mark the midpoint as V but here I have to mark it on second division why uh, C uh, okay sorry uh, I'm sorry uh, first I'll divide the CF into five equal parts why five again because it is three plus two so five parts so I will uh, divide it into five parts then I'll mark V on the second division. Why on second division? Uh, take a look. C from C, it is 2 away. And from 5, it is, uh, sorry, from F, it is 3 away. So let's see. First, I'll divide it into 5 equal parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, and finally, 5 will be my focus. Now see, the eccentricity was what? 3 by 2. 3 is the distance from F. So 1, 2, and finally, 3. And 2 was the distance from directrix. So 1 and 2. So, because this V will depend on my eccentricity ratio, whatever eccentricity ratio is given will be uh, where my point V will be marked. Say if it is, uh, in this if it is given 4 by 1, for example, if it is given 4 by 1, then what will it be? It will be marked at point 1. Instead of 3 by 2, it is 4 by 1. So, what it is like, it is here 4 and here 1. So, eccentricity will go 
uh, will determine the point from where the parabola uh, hyperbola will pass so this point v is the point through which this hyperbola is going to pass in this method my step next is now i'll measure the distance between v and f and then erect a perpendicular at v which perpendicular to what perpendicular to the axis and mark the point as b dash now this v b dash is equal to v f v b dash is equal to v f and this v b dash is perpendicular to c c dash that is what we are going to do the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to launch a line or say draw a line which is passing through b from c like this as you can see c b dash which is extended up till uh, maximum that you can go the next thing is uh, we are going to draw perpendiculars at 3 4 and 5 perpendiculars to what again perpendiculars to the axis and they will be meeting this line and we'll be marking these at points 3 dash 4 dash 5 dash because it this line which is passing through 3 i'll mark this as 3 dash this which is passing through uh, 4 4 dash and this 5 dash now next thing what we are going to do is the distance uh, so radius that we are going to take is 3 3 dash the center would be my focus f and i will cut point p and p dash that is above and below the axis c c dash as points p and p dash on the line which is passing through 3 or perpendicular line which is passing through 3 as you can see now i explain it on the figure my distance would be 3 to 3 dash that is my radius on the compass or say on the vertul that you uh, might know it better i'll put my pointer under f and i'll cut an arc p and i'll cut an arc p dash it goes like this p and p dash the next thing is my 4 4 dash will be my radius and point again at f like this p like this and for 5 again 5 5 dash will be the radius and it will be taken as like this so i have three points now for, you should take more points say five to six points uh on your uh on your uh, page that is takes instead of four five takes six seven and eight and repeat the same procedure because i couldn't extend this line beyond this i did not take any points so that you will have a more accurate hyperbola than what is there in this particular slide again step eight is draw a smooth curve passing through all these points to get your hyperbola so this was a hyperbola by directrix and focus method see for cone uh, sorry for ellipse for hyperbola and direct uh, and hype sorry for ellipse for parabola 